What's up guys? Welcome to another product feedback video and we'll be checking out the Thermaltag Therone or Therone in this video review which I'm excited about for a particular reason. The reason for my excitement is the Theron was actually designed with an RTS player in mind and as an avid StarCraft 2 player myself or real-time strategy gamer this mouse is actually designed in conjunction using Softball who himself is actually a professional StarCraft 2 player and we'll see how well they've put the two together as I can definitely test it out and then maybe I can go 1v1 against Apollo sometime if he sees this video review The Thermaltake Theorone comes actually with quite a lot of bits and pieces inside the packaging. You actually get a CD driver because Thermaltake now do a GUI for their mice, which I'm really excited to have a go at. You also get some cool stickers as well as a carry pouch to move that mouse around with you and keep it protected from landing sessions. And it's quite overly pretty impressively packaged. It doesn't feel like it's a cheap product at all. I definitely think they've done a good job on their packaging. Taking a close look at the Thermaltake Theron, it's actually finished in this matte sort of rubber satin finish, which for me I actually really like it to give this nice sense of quality on the mouse. You've also got two buttons here, which actually allow you to reduce and increase your DPI, as well as two customizable buttons on the side here. And you also have obviously your two main at the top, your left and right. A lot of people ask me how loud is it? Have a listen. Doesn't seem any louder than any normal mouse. As well as the scroll wheel. It is one of, the, one of those click, click, click ones. So you feel every single click you do. But I like it like that. I don't like those free spinning wheels at all. It's, it's much better for switching guns. And, and I don't really know the applicable thing for StarCraft 2. But... If you ever use it for any other sort of games, and definitely this is a nice setup here. From an ergonomics perspective, the Thermaltake Theron is actually a little bit of a smaller mouse. For me, it actually reminds me of the Logitech G9X, and has a very similar feel to it, as well as sort of a bit good quality build. And whether this is designed for sort of flat hand use like this, or the claw grip, I actually think either style this mouse will actually suit, because on this side here, it's actually got a very nice indentation, which you can see pretty well. And that actually, it makes it comfortable for however you position your hand. Personally, I usually tend to use a mouse like this, and I, but I do know a lot of my viewers tend to use it like a claw grip. Personally, I don't think either will matter. And also, on this side here, you do have another customizable button. Taking a look at this mouse underneath, it actually exposes a weighted system. And I did actually like the weight of this mouse as it came, which actually included all of the weights already in there, the, the five of them. I think it weighed a very nice amount, definitely good for good micro when it's coming to RTS sort of battles. But I did find that the weight actually made the mouse feel a little bit heavy on the rear side. It would have been nice if the, mouth, the weights were kind of maybe spread across the middle and center just to make it a little bit more balanced from my perspective. And just so you guys know that the weights that they provide are 4.5 grams, which definitely lightens up the mouse if they've been removed completely. Now taking a look at the bottom of the mouse, we've actually got a sensor that goes up to 5600 DPI and it is adjustable for all the way from 100 all the way up, which I'm definitely happy about. Most RTS gaming, I usually tend to have it at 1600, but it's a personal preference of what you guys want to use. 5600, I think, is a little bit overly sensitive, and I do tend to move my mouse around a lot more. Also, it does have the option to change the polling rate, so that's that 125, 500, 1000 hertz. I usually tend to have it at 1000 regardless, and I don't usually tend to touch it. But again, it just gives you that flexibility without opening up the GUI and adjusting all your settings. The other ability is that the actual mouse does have profiles storage. It can actually store up to, I think it was about 45 macro keys, which is 
pretty ridiculous, but this is designed for more RTS, and I think a lot of macro keys you can not allow to use because I think it's illegal in games like that, as far as I'm aware. So obviously people can't cheat and buy in a whole heap of keys and actions. Um, but regardless, you know, this mouse is like a bit of a cross for me. It feels like it's a bit of a a RTS mouse, and also it's a game a mouse that you can use in other games like you know even games like WoW and those sort of systems as well. The lock feature that's on the bottom of the mouse right here actually allows you to uh, lock the side function buttons. So that means you don't ac if you accidentally press something, nothing happens. So if you accidentally usually bumping your buttons and things like this during gameplay or, or very intensive sessions, then you can actually disable them by just flicking over the lock button underneath. Just to show you guys again with the size comparison, it is a little bit shorter to say the Razer Mamba, which we've got on the right, which I've got a review of on my channel, so if you haven't yet, go check it out. Um, but from a build quality perspective, they, you know, it's on par to the Razer products, which I'm, which I'm very surprised with. The buttons click solidly, the, the mouse feels like it's a good build. I don't really have any complaints from a, from a construction quality standpoint, I think it's quite good. Just looking at it from the side profile, you can see that the palm rest is actually pushed more towards the back of the mouse. So it is kind of more designed for those claw grip sort of players. As you can see with the Razer Mamba behind it, the hump is more towards the front of the mouse, which I think aids the weight distribution. It's only bad, like having the weight more towards the back of the mouse, but an even distribution I think is a little bit better, but it really comes down to preference. It's not hugely noticeable, but just something I picked up a little bit when using the mouse. But I think the advantage though with having it heavy at the back is that if you're playing at 5600 DPI or a very high DPI player, then the heavy weightedness at the back might be better for you so you don't actually flick the mouse around too much. But yeah, it really comes down to how you set everything up. Now, something pretty cool about this mouse is that you have quite an array of customization when it comes to the uh, lighting. Uh, and as you can see here, we've got lighting on both sides of the mouse. On the bottom, illuminated logo, as well as a scroll wheel, which you can see there. Now, once you've actually installed customizable software, you can actually change these. So we've got different options such as red, which looks pretty sick. Uh, you've got blue, purple, green, cayenne, yellow, yellow or green, something like that. It looks more of a yellowy color to me. Personally, um, I actually like to do a mix, which you can actually do on this mouse. So you can actually customize it. So say I want to have the sides red, I can actually make the sides of the, the mouse red. So you can really have quite a, a good amount of fun customizing the mouse to look how you want it. Now, the software I'll show you in a sec, and we'll go over the different features and customization of the actual mouse. Alright, so what we're looking at here is Thermal takes new GUI for their mice, or in this case the Theron. And you can get a f you've got quite a few controls here. Uh, you can actually change different settings for different profiles. You've got up to five, which like I said, can be stored on the mouse. Um, you've got a normal mode which basically you can customize these LEDs. So like I said before, you can go in here, you know, maybe I want the bottom to be, to be red, etc. on apply that and you can do that and it reflects it on the mouse. So that gives you that control. But when you flick over to the battle mode, it kind of becomes a bit whacked, like, you know, it changes colors by itself and, uh, you know, it depends on how fast you're clicking and the changes to different variations. But to be honest, you shouldn't be looking at your mouse if you're a hardcore gamer. You should be concentrating on your game. So it's more for show rather than, I think, for practicality. In the performance option, we have, like I said, the different DPI levels you can run. Um, personally, I usually run it at 1600, but I did use it at the high end just to see how well it coped. Man, and if you run a mouse at 5600 DPI, yeah, I'm surprised that how little you move your hand, but whatever, there's people out there who use it either way. You can adjust a few other things here, scroll speed, cursor speed, polling rates, etc. And it will come down to how you want to use it. So it's a full options, pretty much every single um, brand of gaming mouse now has those options, but the way they're laid out is pretty good. Um, again, you can also change what the different buttons do, so you can customize them for different macro settings and you can record your macros that you want to use as well. 
It's really customizable. It's quite good, and uh, I'm impressed with the way Thermal Take is uh, moving forward in each uh, new product I review. I'm really liking the attention to detail Thermal Takes is is doing on these designs. You got a nice gold-plated USB connection. It's a braided cable, so it's it's tangle-free, and you got a nice little Thermal Take logo there to shorten the cord if you need to. So what are my final thoughts of the Thermaltake Theron? So the, the price that they're asking and, and what I've seen around for sale online is somewhere between the $80 to about $100 price point. So it's definitely up there when it comes to price, but do you get a good gaming mouse? To be honest, I can't fault it pretty much with anything from a gaming perspective. It does perform very well, uh, it tracks very well, it's very smooth, there's no jags, there's no weird effects that I noticed. The uh, performance is definitely tick. The build quality is again not too bad. I do have a little bit of a gripe. I believe that the plastic that they use around this lighting and also around the scroll wheel it doesn't distribute the light evenly enough. Again, I had this complaint with the other pro other products that I reviewed. It's not a huge deal breaker, but you know, once you've used a better LED lighting, such as from the Razer mice, you do tend to appreciate it much more. The buttons are solid. Everything seems solid. The soft matte finish is very good. I would have liked the LEDs actually to light up a bit better here, uh, in terms of telling you which sensitivity you're at it, uh, doesn't br it's not very bright and it's got a weird way of telling you how it actually lights up I would have preferred it to say one two three four rather than be like nothing one and then two and then three so it's a little bit weird but regardless apart from that these are just minor small things overall if you want a good customizable mouse to improve your RTS gaming and you don't want to go for anything you know different or you're looking at your different options then this mouse is definitely one that I would recommend. If you've got any specific questions you want to ask me, you can hit me up on Twitter, at Product Feedback. The full review will be up on our website as well. If you haven't yet, go check it out. The link's in the description. And personally, would I buy this? Well, coming from a Razer member, which is a basically a $200 mouse, if I had to drop down to around $80, $90, what can you get? Well, you pretty much you have got the Death Adder, uh, maybe the one above it. You've also got the G9X. Uh, you've got this mouse here. And I've seen a few other competitive mice as well for around that sort of price point. But do they give you this cool flexibility of uh, LED lights and customization and everything? Then then they don't. And this one does. But there's one thing to know is, like I said, the, the design is a little bit interesting. I do think it actually does suit... Uh, the, the uh, claw grip a little bit better than it does for a flat handed use so if you're not or are not a fan of using the claw grip or you really hate that sort of style then I would look elsewhere but if you're, you're a claw grip user you don't mind sort of having your hand up a little bit then this is definitely a good quality mouse to check out and I'll give it 8 out of 10 product feedback stars this is Muhammad thanks for watching and see you guys in another video soon